Here is a pile of parts under my desk. In its previous life, that pile was this CNC router, a so-called CNC 3040, that I got second hand. I took it apart in my last video. And in that process, I found some issues that I need to take care of before I can rebuild the machine. Hopefully, I will not find more issues in that pile. I don't know what happened to the machine in its previous life. I assume it was bought as self-assembly kit and put together by the previous owner. At one point in that time, it must have been dropped, or it fell headfirst off a table. The top plate of the Z-axis has a substantial dent. The corner of this side piece here was bent up about halfway. I have already bent it back, mostly, because the cable drag chain was sitting on here and I had to reach this screw to get it off. One of the Y-axis bearing blocks has a dinged corner. How is that even possible? Did someone throw the block down before assembly? This machine might be cursed. Worst of all, whatever happened to it also had distorted the plate that carries the portal bridge. That massive chunk of aluminium was bent by several millimeters. And, uh oh, that might mean that these are not straight anymore too. I will check later in this video. The plate is too solid to bend it back by hand. Believe me, I tried. To straighten it, I had to make my own pressing tool from random pieces of wood. I start with making a pressing bar and a counterplate. The plate gets two holes that line up with holes in the pressing bar. The holes in the pressing bar are drilled smaller and then tapped M8. Then I apply some glue and screw two M8 rods in these holes. The rods are extended to fit through the other side. In the middle goes a wooden 2x4, more or less, that can take the bending force. The aluminium plate is placed onto the wood piece, so that the force pushes against the bend when I tighten the nuts. This metal piece here is a simple indicator that shows me how far I am bending. I am tightening the nuts until the plate looks straight. I wanted to go a bit further to overcome the springiness, but then, off camera, one of the rods came out with a loud bang, because the nuts were not long enough to connect the rods. Down! I got longer nuts from the hardware store, and for safety also embedded the rods deeper in the wood. Then I tried again. Everything held together this time, and after several rounds of bending and measuring, the plate is straight. Well, almost. There is still a bend of about 0.1 mm, but I will just not tell anyone. Now that the plate is straight, I wanted to make it stiffer. There are a bit more than 25 mm height clearance here that I can work with. I got a 24 by 5 mm thick strip of aluminium in the hardware store and cut off a piece for each of the sides. For the next step, I align the side strips precisely using some 3D printed 6mm riser blocks. Each piece gets 5 3mm holes drilled. Then I use super glue to attach them to the edge of the plate. The holes are then drilled further using the existing holes as drill guide. Then I remove the side plates and drill the holes in the plate to 4.2 mm diameter, which is topping size for a M5 thread. I start topping using my little drill press to keep the top square to the work. Then I finish each hole using a top wrench. The side plate holes are drilled to 5 mm and get countersinks to make space for the screws. A test fit of both sides shows me that everything will go together correctly. Then I roughened up the surfaces with sandpaper, applied a generous amount of super glue and screwed the plates together for good. 
According to my very scientific measurement method, the plate is stiffer now. As a small downside, I have less wide travel now in my machine. I guess my machine is now a CNC 3039. Now to the bearing shafts. I need to measure how straight they are. Here are two 3D printed Y blocks for resting the shaft. I place one of my new old dial indicators in the middle, so that the plunger is pushed in a little bit by the shaft. When I now turn the shaft, any height difference is shown on the indicator. This is the first y-axis shaft. It has a height difference of about 500 of a millimeter from the lowest to the highest point. That means that it is 0.025 millimeters out of straight. That's about 1 thou. That's pretty good, I guess. The second y-axis shaft is a different story though. From lowest to highest point it has a difference of 15 hundredths of a millimeter. The shaft is 0.075 millimeter or 3 thou out of straight. I don't know yet how bad that is or what to do with that, honestly, but I think the machine might really be cursed. I also checked the condition of the x-axis shafts and they are both fine. But one thing that I noticed when I took the machine apart last time was that the sled for the z-axis is rattling. That sled sits on the two x-axis shafts. I don't know whether you can see this in the video, but this piece is rocking back and forth by more than a tenth of a millimeter. The sled also feels loose and is easy to move along the shafts. I measured the diameter of the x-axis shafts and found that they seem to be about 0.05 millimeters under size. On the other hand, the y-axis shafts are the same size, more or less. And the shafts for the x-axis feel fine and tight in the bearing blocks for the y-axis. Is it possible that the x-axis bearings are somehow bad or a bit oversized? By the looks of it, the bearings were held in the z-axis block with small grab screws. I took them out. To my surprise, none of the bearings was moving even a tiny bit when I tried to push or pull them out. I think they were literally pressed into the block and that process even cracked the aluminium a bit, as you can see here. At the end, I did not get any bearing out without destroying it. I took out the plastic bolt circle housings so that only the metal outer shells remained in the block. Then I heated up the block with a torch and drove the shells out with a hammer and a chisel type thing. After apologizing to the poor aluminium block, I sanded away the burrs that were left by my brute force and got new bearings. After the bearings had arrived and to my even bigger surprise, they also did not fit in the holes. They went in a bit with slight violence and then got stuck. I could press them all the way in, probably, but that feels just wrong. The aluminium block clearly has a production error and I guess the previous owner solved the problem with a hammer. Great, this thing is definitely cursed. Well, I guess I stop here, for now. My plan for the next video is the following. Step 1. Either finding a new 16mm bearing shaft or trying to get that one straight, somehow. Step 2. Trying to get the new bearings to fit in the block without brute force. These jobs are going to be interesting, but maybe I can lift the curse. See you next time.